So I want to talk more about not the shadow, but my shadow. Um, because, you know, I can talk all day theoretically about, you know, this idea called the shadow that supposedly everybody experiences and has a relationship with. But, you know, the best way to really get to the root of the shadow is to look at your own shadow. And I wanted to just evaluate myself. You know, some people have anger complexes and they get mad at everything. Not only other people, but just situations. They get mad at situations and they flip out over all these tiny aggravations. I really don't. I've, I've learned to manage that type of, um, those types of situations very well. I don't get angry. I just, the last time I got close to anger was a few days ago when, when uh, I had to, you know, my, my campus, university campus is really big and I, had, I was taking a test, it was a take-home test, we had to go to use a specific computer uh, to use a specific uh, statistical program and um, the computer labs in the psychology building were occupied by a class and I, so I walked back across the campus to use another computer lab thinking I could use the copy of the program I had on my flash drive and just install it, but it didn't work, so I tried to go to another computer lab, you know, halfway on the other side of campus, and it didn't work there either. I went back to the psychology building and the class was still there. You know, I had to take this test, it was due tomorrow, so, you know, I was really, uh, Starting to get, you know, I, got, I would get a little bit annoyed each time I would get to the place and it wouldn't work out because, you know, I just have to walk so far. But, you know, again, there's not even a person to get angry at. There's this situation that I happen to find myself in. And, you know, I have to take a walk. And then I have to take another walk. And, you know, I like to walk, but it's just really hot outside. And, you know, it was a drag, I'll be honest. But I didn't get angry, you know. I just was, I just did it. Didn't, like, get too frustrated. I didn't. You know, whatever. Didn't ruin my day at all. I forgot. I forgot it happened as soon as I finished my test. Um, so anger's not my problem. Where do I have a complex? Sexuality is definitely very hidden and um, shadowy area that, you know, I think that's true for a lot of people. I mean, my parents never talked about it. My dad really never talked about it with me. I never had a talk about sex. My mom was very afraid of me even moving into that world, you know. So, you know, when I was younger and I, you know, I 12 or 13, and I would start finding out that, like, Channel 99 was, uh, some, uh, you know, some porno that the vertical hold wasn't quite right, and it was flickering in and out, but, you know, you could see a tit every once in a while, you know, when it, when it just angled itself out just right. Um, and, you know, my mom would walk in and see me watching that, and, uh, she would get really angry, like it was, uh, you know, she wasn't just embarrassed. She was embarrassed, and I was embarrassed. There was that, but she was also angry. Like, it's a, it's evil. And, you know, I think our, our whole culture is really built this way, and I think it's it's kind of, uh, it's really just, uh, the whole thing is this, is this, it's a device to make sex more interesting, I really think. It just, it brings it to this, is extreme. It's almost a fetish. Um, Christianity is really a sexual fetish. The whole, I mean, it's a religion obsessed by sex more so than any other. Um, you know, you could argue Islam is more so, but the culture itself, I mean, when you they're not as, uh, 
I don't know. I'm not going to say anything about Islam. Let's not even compare. Let's not say Christianity is the most sexually repressed religion or, or a cultural situation. Let's just say that there are various aspects of the religion that are strange. Like priests aren't allowed to have sex. Which, um, you know, okay, they have to be devoted to the church. If you're going to be a priest, you have to, wow, I mean, being a holy man and sort of um, taking an oath to be holy, I mean, that's what you do when you become a priest, right? You're saying, everything I do is in the name of God. That's a lot of responsibility. And they don't want to go uh, being all irresponsible and having sex. God's word can only speak through sex if it's for, you know, raising a family, right? That's what, that's the common day reading of the Bible. Premarital sex is evil. It definitely complicates things, but it also loosens things up in another way. Uh, you know, it's so hard to, it's, you know, obviously there's this sexual issue going on in the world. Right? Like, why do we talk about abortion and gay marriage and, uh, you know, the American family so much in politics and, and legislation and, uh, you know, the way the government is running, they're not only running the, uh, you know, the justice system and the civil service, you know, the policing systems, but they're designing our culture for us by just manipulating these issues, these issues that don't have anything to do with the government. You know, sexuality is such a private thing, inherently. Every person's sexual history is so unique. Um, if anybody has seen uh, the movie Kinsey or has read about Alfred Kinsey and the uh, sexual surveys that he did in the 50s that really uh, revealed that sex after marriage in the missionary position was, you know, heterosexual sex after marriage in the missionary position is actually the minority of what uh, human sexual encounters consisted of at that point. And, uh, you know, he got accused of being a communist by uh, McCarthy and, <laughs> you know, so you can see how the government already, way back then, was trying to police the culture police the perception of what's moral, what's not moral. The government now is really the, uh, you know, politicians and scientists are the priesthood. The government, because the, the scientists work for the government. The government subsidizes everything, every science and technology that's actually advancing at a significant rate. You know, there's private industry too. And hopefully they're going to get us into space a lot cheaper than NASA can. But in general, you know, the thriving technological um, uh, communities are defense scientists, uh, scientists who are de designing weapon systems, and um, you know, the amount of money being poured into research for yeah, you know, to applications for warfare. I know in my uh, psychology building, actually, uh, on the top floor, they're running studies with this tactile sensor that you strap around your stomach, and uh, it's hooked up to the hand signals of the leading officer. So you not only can you see his motions, but you can feel them in your stomach. So you get the double input, so you can recognize the meaning of the message a lot easier. Even when there's smoke and shrapnel flying, you can feel it.